Dhammai Galo Gai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkanu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, seeking to do only the good pleasure of the Lord of a God upon this earth through His chosen men, in the great realm of this mankind being made after the fall of Adam to be the frail one. We are the frail one because if we don't believe in my Christ, we cannot enjoy the treasure of the divine one in this earthen vessels. And yet there is a glory or the fashion of a soulish body and there is a glory and the fashion of a spiritual body and the words what he speaks to us we learn from that the soulish body are they those who haven't believed in my Christ and yet they will be resurrected for eternal condemnation for eternal punishment and there is a point for spiritual resurrection they will be risen in the presence of the Lord of a God to stand in His glory, to reflect number one on this earth in the spiritual resurrection when they have been edified till the time of the Lord of a God has appointed us to seem fit and to be available for His work on this earth. And number two, when we go back home, the inner man should match the outward man which our Lord of a God is going to give like Christ's resurrection. Therefore, we find in him that the Son has been given the great resurrection body, raising him among the dead on the third day itself, because in him was no sin. But for us, the time of the Lord our God has given, even after salvation, working out the deeds that fit unto the salvation. The translation in Philippians 2 gives many people to go into wrong conclusions and to say, that we need to work out our own salvation? No, that's wrong. The word is very specific for us in the Greek to learn that the works that could meet and match the salvation which our Lord of God has given for us graciously and we have to behave. The heavenly citizens, thus he prays for us in Philippians 1, raising from the standard of which we have to know the true value of doctrine in our lives particularly in verse number 8 of Philippians chapter 1, he inculcates for us the great value of the word. And he goes to study and to prove for us what is it the inner man should match. The rest of the time being left over here on this earth of us, Peter 4, to what he says, shall not use it for the lustful pattern of the flesh, but to the glory of the Lord. For Lord God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more, where in knowledge and in all judgment. The word epinosis knowledge, the clear and exact knowledge, and the judgment, the experiential knowledge, so that our moral conduct can avoid error, and it can take a thorough participation in the object of the knowledge that is Christ and having sensibility of experimenting of that knowledge which is naturally manifested or manif manif 
manifested in all things. That's what he says. Eyes this eye, which is sensibility. And that sensibility is what he says. In every mannerism of your walk that you go through on this earth should manifest in all things the knowledge of the Lord of a God, which has to be superior. And therefore he prays, the reason why we have been still kept alive on this earth, even after salvation, demands that we grow more and more. And therefore the word over here he uses, to abound and where we have to abound in the love agape love not philos not eros where many people have many finalisms of that loves but here the love agape which says for us the demands of the lord of a god not our will what we love the lord but what our lord of a god wills and intends that his love has to be manifested through his word in our lives that's the word agape and many people don't understand this great word agape and they love to think in every mannerism of the thinking to describe it. But agape meant to say that demands of the word of the Lord of a God, that God, that's what the Lord God the Father is demanding, that love is called as agape love. It is not that what we can say, Lord, I love you. If you love him, then keep his commandments. That's what he says for us in Deuteronomy chapter 10, what Lord God requires. But that's what we are doing. We don't love the Lord. But here he says, and this is I'm praying, that the love of you, that is what according to the demands of the word of the Lord of you, still it would go more and more, that his super and abounding or exceeding excel and to be enough. And that's what super abounding were in all epinosis knowledge and in every mannerism of sensibility in all clear and exact knowledge and in every mannerism of conduct which could avoid error. And why is that we have to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine? Or why is it that we should strive to walk in the straight gate day by day, carrying the cross and coming to do the will of Lord God the Father but become his disciple? Therefore, in Genesis 9-6, we read yesterday because he has made man in the image of God. What is the Tesla and the word which we have been read in Genesis 9-6 particularly teaches for us it has been made to be perfect in the mannerism of knowledge, perfect in the mannerism of righteousness, and perfect in the mannerism of His holiness. That's what we read yesterday, Teslaim. And what is happening today? We know very well the people are not interested to look what exactly we have to grow up and why is the reason we need to grow up since we have been made in the image of the Lord of a God we need to manifest like God to this people if Moses was God and Pharaoh was his prophet as a mouth to the people so we are here Lord of a God being our God and we are here now for this people as the prophet as the God he calls us I have been made you in the image of God therefore put upon the new man Ephesians 4 Verse 20 through 26 are following as well what we can learn. But why we aren't putting the new man? Because we haven't known what Christ our Lord our God prayed for us in John chapter 17 verse 10. And prior to that, dear brethren, we need to look that our life needs a solid and stable base. Otherwise, everything will turn into confusion, dishonor, disagreement. If you are not able to make up a solid foundation, a solid base, the solid foundation we find only in Christ because He is the rock for us. And therefore we need to look if Christ our Lord of our God is that rock that symbolizes that truth is found only in Christ. And our own weaknesses and dependence require a foundation of absolute perfection. And that absolute perfection he has sanctified and kept apart for us at the moment of faith alone in Christ alone. And in the process of this experiential sanctification, or in the process of which you have been kept alive, demands that you turn out from your weak and baseless foundations into absolute perfection, which is nothing but the solid basis of the word of the Lord of a God. And for that cause he has given the everything that has been needed for you. And indeed he says, I have made you in the image of the Lord. But because of your continuing evil. That's what it says. You have been being always in the continued evil. 
and what is that continued evil for which they are all the time. His imaginations are disagreeable because they haven't been renewed. Therefore, dear brethren, we find a great passage in Isaiah chapter 48, verses 7 through 19, or 17 through 19. But prior to that, we have many things to learn. We shall have a word of prayer, sanctify ourselves to look unto the wonders of the word of the Lord of our God. Because it is his Lord God's will that we need to learn his word in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not for the point of just learning the way how they could learn, but the point of learning to understand and to apply it for our lives. So we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look. What is it? Our Lord, our God, wants to teach us. Infinite Divine Holy Father, as we're going to study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's much less pure, gracious name, we pray, Father. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen. Yesterday we were looking as we have been made in the image of God. How our Lord, our God, demands to be perfect in knowledge, in righteousness, and in the holiness. Comparing to the example of this Israelite, where they failed, though he has asked us what he requires, only to obey his word, to fear him, and to do that which is needful for the glory of the Lord, that is to keep his commandments and guard his commandments. Therefore he repeats for us the same thing in Isaiah 48, 17, Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth, again we find the word Lamad, which is equivalent to Mantano plus Didasco, again to make them disciples, which teacheth thee for profit, Yawal, to gain, to benefit, and to avail that which has been set forward to do always the good. So he says, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth, which maketh thee to learn by becoming disciples for profit and which always direct leads thee in the process of marching the way of your direct again, the word which has been called, the manner of life, the course of life, or the character of virtue of life, that you should go, that is Yalak, that is you should walk. Therefore he says over here we find, which leadeth, the rock, that is what to march, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we have read in Galatians 5.25, because when you live in the Spirit, you also should walk in the Spirit. And which way, he says, the course of life, wherewith you shall walk. The two words again, which we find in Galatians chapter 5. He says for us in John chapter 17 verses 10 that I have been glorified in them. He's using the word past tense. He says that every believer it is a great privilege for him to glorify Lord God the Father which has given his son so that his son should be formed in us and through our lives the reflected glory of Christ should be manifested. That's what he says. I have been glorified in them. Because the sole reason why he uses the word number one in Galatians 5.15, he says, walk in the spirit. In Galatians 5.25, he says, march in the spirit. But here we find in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17, the first word what he uses is, which leadeth, that is to march, the way, that is the course of life, so that you should walk in it. There it was, the process of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to be there, but there was only a endowment. But when we come to the church age, we have something greater for us in this discourse of Galatians chapter 5, so that we can easily learn the importance as such why our Lord our God has written the word first to walk and then to march. Therefore, taking our book to Galatians chapter 5, that is what the Bible we can call, and reading them from verse number 15, it should certainly enlighten us the difference why he's saying over here, number one, to go back to walk and then come back to march because here we find to march and then he's saying in, in Isaiah 48 17 to walk therefore here we are beginning with walk and again we are coming back to march there he's asking to march in the fear of the Lord of our God so that you shall learn a gain or a profit that has been set before you what is that gain that has been set before them we shall look there in the 18th verse the peace which shall flow like rivers and one more thing the righteousness of the Lord of our God which shall be manifested
But here, why we need to walk first in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Because the church its strategy has been changed. Because you have been sanctified and kept apart before the foundation of the world, where you have been called to be holy and blameless. But there, they have been sanctified through the same process of faith. But they have been demanded to march first. Why they have to march? Because they have to be strict in keeping the law. And we know very well none could keep the law. Either when we come back to the church, it's certain few who have been having a faithful witness of the Lord of a God, where our Lord of a God could call them good and faithful stewards, wherewith he says, we haven't dis we haven't dealt the word of the Lord of a God deceitful gains in Second Corinthians chapter 4. But here we find some faithful men till to the point of their life, whichever manner it could be. If Christ our Lord of a God within three days he got his resurrection body, he kept us alive over here after the movement of salvation till to the death or rapture, whichever could happen so that after that, when the details of life, our inner mind could match the outward man when we appear in his presence. So is awaiting in us to correct us from milk to bread, from bread to meat. That's the great process of his life which has designed for us in this church age because while we have been born again, we do sin either by thought, word or deed. But the word, what he is teaching for us first to walk in the spirit and then to march in the spirit, we learn the great discourse in Galatians chapter 5 which should apply for our lives to wake up what our Lord of God has planned for us in this church age. Wherewith we can say, we are the unique ones. And we cannot see the flesh could lust over the spirit any longer. Because we find a great word. But in the past dispensation, they had the law to keep. Therefore, he says for us, this I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What is the lust of the flesh? Covering your sins through the law. That's what it is. For the flesh fl lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things that you would. And he says, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. But there, they were not been under the constant guidance, indwelling of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. They were supposed to keep the law. Therefore, they used to march and there used to be strict adherence for that law. None of the people could keep the law. Therefore, Christ, our Lord of God, he has alone fulfilled the law and he is the end of the law. But we have a new law in the church age. The new law to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18b, the prayer of word will mislead for many so-called tongues cry which they can never overcome until unless they truly obey the word. And as he says in Ephesians 4, anger and sin not. The reason for anger, we resist false doctrines. That's the anger what we get. We hate them with perfect hatred. The reason why we hate them is they are blaspheming the Lord of a God. And there may be anyone on this earth, including the president of the country of USA or the prime minister of my country of India, if they would don't honor my Lord's word, and if they ignore to honor the Lord's word, then they are nothing before us. We seldom care them, though he may be in such great high rank. If there is none, if there is anyone in a high rank of his life, and if he doesn't honor my Lord's word, what is that the respect we should give them? As a moral duty in this country, India, because they are multi-religions, we go back and respect their moral values, that's it. We love to give them the virtue, but they don't take. We are not making them compulsory to believe in my Christ. It is their will. But look into the quality of the Christian life. But since the Christians haven't been properly educated to know the right, what is the right word, they have truly forgotten what they have to be representing, my Lord, on this earth in great righteousness and holiness, in the perfection of the knowledge. For a believer, it is emotion plus ecstasy as tongues. That is what we say, don't speak in tongues, because the tongues have been seized long back in 1870. For an unbeliever, it's a demon possession and the religious duty for him to act as if he has been taken care of by the vocal cords and speak in tongues. What difference does it make between a believer and an unbeliever? Doesn't Ephesians 4.17 teach for us this I testify and say before the Lord of our God, you shall not walk. You shall not peripatao according to the Gentile nations which are having matiosis in the vanity of their minds. And that vanity of their mind has been puffed up in the flesh. Therefore they think keeping the law will encourage them to do the will of God the Father, but it is not. Therefore he says, if you have been led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. No more legalistical ritual duties. 
what it is the church or church district order we have be filled with the spirit that's the solid base what we have to put if not your life will be in confusion what does he say for us in Luke 1947 daily teaching the word what does he say in Deuteronomy 32 29 how they would consider the later end what a powerful nation he has made for the Deuteronomy people during the time of Israelites with one they could chase thousand, with two they could chase ten thousand. That's the corporate witness between wife and husband. The same thing he writes in Hebrews 9.26. Do not forsake the assembly of the Lord. He is teaching there the assembly for the corporate witness so that when they have the godly seed, they can train them up in the fear of the Lord our God and train to become like large glory. And not regular church attendance, what you can think. It is every day, every day, every day the word of the Lord of God has to be taught in our pulpits and that's the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher. Not coming weekly once to the church, that could make the difference. No, not at all. Every day, every day, every day. And at what is happening today in our pulpits, you know very well. So if you are been there under the law, that meant to say you have not been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though you are a believer in the church age. Therefore, we find the great works over here to teach what are the works of the flesh which are clearly manifested. And then he goes on to give a great list. Why I'm teaching you all these things, John 17 10 says, Our Lord, our God has glorified in us because the people whom I have given, he says to Father that they are thine and they are mine and I have glorified in them. Can he be glorified when we're walking in the flesh rather than walking in the spirit? Therefore, in Isaiah 48, 17, he says for them first to march in, the, march in the duties or in the commandments in the law which I have given to you so that you shall learn the profit and walk in them. That is what every day, every day, every day, peripatao, every day, one day at a time, one step at a time. So here we find what? The works of the flesh is saying, because you have not been there in the spirit. So what are the works of the flesh? Because you love to keep the law. But he says, no, you have been transformed now from the law into the spirit. And what are the demands of the spirit? We shall look, but first we shall look what are the works of the flesh wherewith you can think that you have been keeping some law. And yet if you practice the works of the flesh, you are even disqualified to keep that law. Because Christ himself has blotted out the law on the cross and has given for us the new law. Therefore he says in verse number 19, the works of the flesh which are clearly evident, phaneria, to make or to make them to be appearing or driven like an animal into the destiny without having any violence. That is what clearly seen. So he says, what are the clearly seen evidences of the flesh? He says, adultery, prostitution, uncleanliness, and asalgia, lasciviousness. And the works of the flesh, you say, if Christ our Lord of our God should be glorified in us, and if you're walking in the flesh, fulfilling the deeds of the flesh, then how you would come to look the new life which Christ our Lord of our God, Lord of our God has designed through his spirit. The new life of his true glory. Do you know what is that new life, he says? First peripatao, walk in the spirit. And then he says in the conclusion of Galatians 5.26, march in the spirit. And therefore we find over here the works of the flesh which are clearly evident and manifested. Number one on the list is adultery. Number two, fornication. And these things you know very well, need not explain, because they are self-explanatory for you. Marriage and having sex without marriage, adultery. The same opposite to the fornication as well. And uncleanliness, what you can call akatharisa, which has not been cleaned. No cleaning process on that. And what is that unclaimed? Though you have been born again, sanctified and kept apart through the work of the Lord of a God in the church age, you have been still unclaimed. Do you know why? First Peter 2, 1 and 2 teaches to us because you haven't drank the sincere milk of the word. And that is what you can look uncleanliness. 
if you have drunk the sincere milk of the word of the Lord of God, you would have been free from every mannerism of the cults, what they have been practiced. Why we call them as cults? Because they don't love to get rid from their hypocritical masks of life. They preach something, they practice something, and if they want to make the unbelievers to believe in my Christ, the first thing like to say with Nietzsche, the German scholar, the German king, what does he say? Show me your redeemed works, then I will believe your redeemer. Isn't it a great insult for us? Because the Lord of God has made us in his image to be like God to these people, yet we have been questioned by such Nietzsche kind of a man to ask, show me as a Christian your redeemed works of your Redeemer, then only I will believe you are Redeemer. Isn't it an insult for us? By that, what do we mean? We mean to say that they haven't drunk the sincere milk of the word of the Lord of God as First Peter 2, 1 and 2 goes to teach. Every mannerism of uncleanliness, the five things what we read over there. Always wearing a hypocritical mask. For whom you want to impress? Does not the word say in the presence of the Lord of God, there is nothing that could be covered, all things are naked. And what is it that you're going to cover? Doesn't our Lord of God know that he searches inward rather than you think you can be appearing outward beautiful, having a look upon your pious nature of your life, thinking that you are the Holy One? What a shame it will be for us. When the unbeliever was claimed to say for us that first you show me your redeemed, redeemed works of your Christ, then only I will believe your Redeemer. Isn't it a great insult? Therefore, many people, when they go to preach gospel, particularly in my country, India, even as such, I think the same history will be all over the globe. They would say, when we are going to preach them, your holy manner walk of life is much more important. Your practical life is much more important. It's not just you have been puffed up with the knowledge that makes the difference. Do you know why? Because the old sin nature always bites and devours to consume the lot get the Holy Spirit, new nature, which has been given for us through the regeneration. Therefore, it wants to take up your spiritual one, the pneumaticas, and make it to be influenced by the sukikas thoughts. Because you're always circus, having the attitude of a natural man. Therefore, the tongue will not become the learned one because you don't want to learn according to the concepts of the word. And you know what a great privilege it is for us that in Christ we have been redeemed, that in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we have been given this new nature so that with this new nature we can reign over our flesh. We can destroy these hypocritical masks of life. And we can make ourselves to be clear in the presence of the Lord because the reason why he has kept us alive even after salvation is that we have to do the works that are be being and seeming fit to the glory of the Lord. And what works we take? The works which have been put for us before the foundation of the world that we have to walk. That includes to master the Bible, that includes to learn the word of the Lord of God, that includes to become a great devotee for Bible doctrine and become the Lama disciple of the word, Mantano plus Didasco. That's what he says again in Ephesians 4, 12 and 13. The Mantano principle, the Didasco principle, for which reason he has given the bona fide gift of the teaching shepherd, of the pastor teacher to the church. Not that he came to have service from you, but he came to serve you with humbleness and humility. But the authority what he has to the word, he has to obey the word, not the man, neither the congregation, neither the committee which has elected him to become the pastor over there. Because it is the Lord of a God. Because the Lord of a God knows the right congregation to the right pastor teacher. And if ever there is no such congregation because the world is lying in slumberness of Christendom being sluggard as a smoke to the eyes and vinegar to the teeth rather than becoming useful to the one which our Lord of a God has sent. We are here not to walk in them, says Romans 16.20. Because we are here to trample Satan under our feet and we are here not to obey the mandates which the world precepts of men have been taught. That's what we shall look even in Colossians 2. The precepts of men which they think they are having a great gain but they are having only a shoe of wisdom which shows but that is only vain. If we have been learned Christ, seek the things that are of the above, not the things of the earth. And why you want to put upon your hypocritical mask day by day? Whom you want to impress. 
the world which are also having the same old sin nature to reign in them and you know bunch of idiots and bunch of morons will come together and they think they appreciate the work of this man but has the Lord of God been pleased by that work Looking upon the time, you should be the communicators of Bible doctrine. Looking upon the time, you should be the people where our Lord of God would delight for the glory of His pleasure. And the Lord of God should enjoy being elated with all of His heart, with all of His soul. And Lord of God, on account of His righteousness credited to us, He would demand to honor His word above His name and to trample Satan under our feet as Ephesians Ezekiel 28, 19 teaches to us that it shall no longer be existent. And we shall walk with the Lord of God flawless. Demanding our Lord of God, examining us, try us, O Lord, try our reins, try our hearts, try our kidneys, breath by breath, and look if there is an offensive way, and lead us in the way of everlasting truth. It demands for us such holy life, but yet we have been not qualified the terms in our mind to understand what is the true holy life in Christ. Because you love to take always the things which are quite contrary to the will of Lord God the Father in heaven. Why are you allowed to do things that are contrary? Because you know not what is there in the Bible to learn. Neither you are desiring to send those shepherds for you who shall reign over with knowledge and with understanding and with great wisdom. What you want your pastors for you? To marry you, to bury you, to pat back of you when you have been having to come every week and give monthly tithes and produce you that you are a good character, great character. No, not at all. The right bona fide duty of the pastor teachers as per we read in Deuteronomy 18.5, the backhand examination. Wherewith our Lord of our God will give him a great examination of a great suffering and a great test. After a great examination, he has been qualified to stand before the presence of the Lord of our God and to minister unto him Sharat, the serious responsibility, what it is, to make every believer perfect and complete in the grace knowledge of the Lord of our God, which has been given to him according to the gracious gift. And if the churches don't practice such things, it is better to be alone than to be in a bad company. That's what Lord did in the midst of the Sodom and Gomorrah. He stood alone. And what we find? We find that these people don't really love the truth. They don't have a stand to stand alone. As the world goes, they're thinking, blinding their eyes. Let us also follow the crowd, the blind leading the blind. The mixed multitude, the way they came and they disturbed. So they are saying, so what if it has been disturbed as well? We are not worried. Let us continue in our own life. Grieving and squelching and deceiving the indwelling trinity of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And how will they honor the Lord? Dear brethren, remember... As Mika chapter 2 gives a great caution of warning for us, wherewith we should wake up what we ought to be and why we haven't yet been there where our Lord of God demands us to be. Because we find in the great verse number 6 to teach us the great lesson, dear brethren. They say that, therefore, in verse number 5, Thou shalt have none that shall cast a cord by lot in the congregation of the Lord. And he says, Prophesy you not. Say, them, say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them, so that they shall not take shame. They think it's a beautiful thing, but they know not it's a shame thing, as we read yesterday as well in Jeremiah chapter 11. It is a shame thing that they have lost the right direction of the word. And furthermore, we read, O oh, thou art that name, the house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord straightened, or the spirit of the Lord of a God is shortened. And are this his doings? Do not my words do good to him that walketh uprightly? But what do they say? They want to learn, learn the shame. Because they want a sweet coating pastor who has been sugar coated and teach them to come weekly once, ask them to pay monthly once, and lead them to talk in tongues rather than edifying them in the word of the Lord of God day by day. 
The time is near than what you can imagine, dear brethren, says Apostle Paul, long back in Second Thessalonians, the night is far spent, the day is at our hand. And in the day we have to walk like the children of light but yet we haven't taken to realize that we have to walk uprightly because the every good word of the Lord of our God which has been recorded for us cautions us not to walk like unbelievers not to walk like the things pertaining to the Israelites but to walk like Christ given for us the greatest image of Lord God the Holy Spirit our role model to be there and to walk in the truth of his word and not to take any substitutory counterfeit messages what are the substitutory counterfeit messages which don't have the importance of the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic? And we look, the, peep, the man who says that he has been a lecturer in the college and he doesn't know what the word vision meant to say in the terms pertaining to Proverbs 28, 16, I think. Where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of God, there the people will perish as the original Hebrew. But he says where there is no vision and he goes to explain, if you don't have vision, your life will spoil. <laughs> and he's a lecturer for the pastors in the theological college. Just look into the standards of these people they are, how these people they have been cooked up. Without having the right fear of the Lord of our God, neither having the right bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church, they would love to make even a woman to preach in the pulpits thinking that why she can't be qualified. They think they have greater knowledge than Apostle Paul. And this is what the righteous anger which Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 4. Not to compromise with them. Better be alone. Get out of from such things where they haven't been ruled according to the rule what I have set for them, says Romans 16, 17. Do not take heaven for these people to pray on behalf of them for, for, for the sake of their needs. Even you pray, I will not hear, says the says Lord of our God to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 11. Though we caution them to go back and do and put number one priority in the Bible doctrine in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic in the languages of the scripture, yet they say, no, we don't want because they are entrusted to impress men rather than the Lord of our God. Therefore, he says in Micah 2 7, Oh, that thou art named the house of Jacob, now, oh, that thou been named the house of Christ, the house of Christians. Is the spirit of the Lord of our God straightened? Is it been shot in you? No, you not. You have been indwelled by the Trinity itself at the moment of salvation. You have been baptized into the great royal family of God by the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have been given the spirit of Christ to master your spiritual life and to walk like Christ because you have the sperm of Christ. No, you not that you have been given so much. Instead of the house of Jacob, you keep over there the house of Christendom or the Christ. And look what all our Lord of God has given. And he says, the words, do not my words do good to them that walk up, that walketh uprightly. And the word what we learn. Are we really walking uprightly? That's what we should look. If you're walking uprightly, the number one priority will be to shun off the things of your flesh. What we have been reading in Galatians chapter 5, which have been clearly evident, which have been clearly manifested, adultery, fornication, every mannerism of uncleanliness, having the mannerism of lusciousness, asalgia. And how you can be walking uprightly, dear brethren. Do you think impressing man is enough? Impressing men, even unbelievers, do that more greater in virtue, more greater in their moral standards than the believers what you are. Therefore, whenever you go to preach for unbelievers, they would rather take out the cultish activities of your pastors, what you can find in the YouTube. And destroying the name of Christianity by wearing crosses. Destroying the images of this men of Christendom, whether they may be Roman Catholic or Protestant. But they belong to Christ. And they love to destroy the image of bishops, they destroy the image of popes. But in fact, indeed, without having the proper knowledge, they are having the power lusts. But the world absorbs you because of you. The name of the Lord of our God, which has to be dreadful in the nations, has become a shameful one. Blasphemous one. Why will the unbelievers believe? On that record, we have a woman, Mother Teresa, in my country, India, who has been rewarded through this country, India, as a Nobel Prize. 
because her deed spoke. Not the words alone. Therefore, the practical life, the holy manner walk of life, which is so much superior and much needed for us to manifest in this unbelieving nation. They love to look upon their gods to be as gods, daimonian idotes. But we Christians should be gods for them, showing the light, showing the path of great salvation of my Christ. Whenever we open up our mouth, being seasoned with salt, every word, and walking like lights as a light luminaries in the midst of this people, to shine forth and to teach them the truth of the Lord. So that we could be easily available for the glory of the Lord. And that what is happening today in our pulpits, the pastors themselves who do not know the importance of the duty to study from the original languages of the scriptures and teach the word properly. The pastors who do not know themselves that their own wives should not have authority over the men. And yet they call that she is a reverend. Maybe this pastor has lost his mind. and make a woman reverend and call her to be in the pulpit making himself to be a reverend and standing in the congregation taking the image of the Lord the word reverence belongs only to my Christ because the word reverence meant to say is available in every mannerism wherever you call him to help if a man in America is in need of help, if he would pray to the Lord of a God because of his immanence and transcendence dwelling in him, he is omnipresent, he goes there to help. And if you keep the name Reverend for you, which is not a legitimate title from the Bible, and it will be helpful for these unbelievers in this world to give you some discount if wherever you go to say that he is a Reverend, he is a Reverend. And what for what you are as a Reverend? Do you have the words of life in you? Have your life taught for you the right word to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? If it has been taught for you, you will be the first one to remove that name or the title reverend in your life. But you say, if you don't have the reverend, the Baptist churches will not allow him to stand in the pulpit. That's what one moron pastor was telling to me. That means what? You are there to teach them according to their own convenience of itching ears. Dear brethren, the right word of the Lord of our God should be number one priority in our life. Therefore, we have been read. Solid foundation is needed. If not, your life will become confusion. Your life will become dishonor. Your life will become disagreeable. Whether they may be hearers or forbears, forget it. We are not here to convince others and to ask them to subscribe for our channels and look. No. Our Lord of our God guides the principle to teach to whom he has to give. He will give this information. Our duty is to crack it out and give every day faithfully to the glory of the Lord of our God. Not to us. What are we? We are unprofitable slaves. That which is our duty to be done, we have to do. If not, Lord of our God knows better to do his work through the nature rather than us who has made man in his own image. That fearing the Lord of a God is the beginning of wisdom. Fearing the Lord of a God is going to add us days and years for what we should consider of a later end. And if it walk not still uprightly, you think the spirit has been shortened. But the spirit of the Lord of a God in the church age, it could be called rightly the dispensation of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because begin on the day of Pentecost till to the time of rapture, it is purely by the Holy Spirit work. Grave not, squelch not, and deceive not, says the word, for the new law what we are, and we are not lawless. Always be filled with the Spirit. Plera or status quo to be controlled in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And we are here not to grave and squelch. And that's why many are weak, sick, until to the point of death, says the scripture, because you would not judge yourselves accurately through the light of the word of the Lord of our God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Doesn't your conscience know very well? That's what he gives a great discourse for us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. When we go back and look that for you to read that particular verse in verse number 5, it should certainly give the importance of your conscience. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 
to teach us the great lesson. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. There is no need for us to worry whether there will be people to hear of phobia, whether there will be people to call us that we are mad, whether there will be people to think that we are beggars. All glory to the Lord. Paul was been called mad, Jeremy was been called mad, and my friend Esther called up and said, Your hair cell looks like a mad one. I said, Glory to Lord. And you not worry about what the people think. Because we faint not. And we require over here, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. The hidden things of dishonesty. Those who don't walk uprightly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, are walking along to hide the things of dishonesty, patting one another, making itching ears, pastors, to encourage you and not to sound or not to teach you in sound Bible doctrine. What a shame it will be for us. And that what is happening today in our pulpit. Men are hiding and not able to wake up to give that we have to renounce the hidden things of dishonesty and not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God, our God. This is what we look. Every man conscious in the sight of the Lord, our God, so that we manifest the truth, commending ourselves. That is what you need to have, your conscience to walk uprightly. You need to have the conscience to love the word above anything else on this earth. And furthermore, he says that if our gospel is been hid with them that are lost, and then he says, the God of this world has blinded the minds of these men believe, which believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. And then furthermore, he says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, which hath shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Again, you find the importance of Philippians 1 9 to grow up in the knowledge 2nd Peter 3 18 again as well the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ and then he says how you can but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of the dunamis one may be of God and not of us and we are troubled on every side yet not distrust we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken we have been cast down but not destroyed that's what he meant to say we faint not and always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus Christ might be manifested in our body. Always manifesting the dying of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that the life of Jesus Christ might be made manifested in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Why we come and preach every day, though the work of the things pertaining to doctrine we fulfill, we demand you to be available in your conscious sake to wake up and to learn the right word of the Lord our God. Because we having the same spirit of faith according as it has been written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which rise up Jesus Christ shall also rise up also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound do the glory of God for which cause we faint not but though the outward man perishes yet the inward man has to be renewed day by day and the word for renew it is very very important I'm just reading you to give the whole of a just we are not going word upon word because it takes a lot of time for us to expound and as our Lord our God would come in the point of exposition of that we would expound it when we take every day Bible classes but here we find in 3, 4, 1 the code of 
Anakaino, which have been wrote. It meant to say, used only in the passable, in the in the passive sense, to be renewed completely by God. It refers to the redemptive activity of God corresponding to the creation of man, which by putting an end to man's existing corrupt state establishes a new beginning which is qualitatively different than the past in agreement with the meaning of the word kainas. Therefore, qualitatively new as contrasted to neos, numerically another or a new one. Therefore, dear brethren, he says, used in the active voice in Hebrew 6 6 in the form of anakinezo, which means that man himself must have a new and qualitatively different kind of repentance. If the first repentance did not see him through, it is desire to its desired purpose of eternal redemption. Therefore, dear brethren, here it has been called to renew with the same kind of experience, but the things pertaining to the age and the things pertaining to quality of life we need to come to the lord's glory therefore he says though the outward man perishes inward man has to be renewed day by day the word again importance of day by day learning the word and therefore he says for our light affliction which is but for a moment the people may think how we have to carry our cross and come every day to learn Bible doctrine. But he says, this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And then he gives for us, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Therefore, we redeem and we call you to renew day by day for that great eternal weight of glory. Therefore, your conscious sake, you have to wake up to walk uprightly. That's what the word says. Because the deeds of the flesh are very, very clearly manifested and the furthermore what we can read dear brethren it says for us specifically in Micah chapter 2 verse 7 and says they shall not learn the shame because they don't want to take the shame from the pastor teacher and yet they want to practice the disagreeable and dishonoring gains and therefore he says O thou that thou named the house of Jacob but now keep it the house of Christ is the spirit of the Lord of our God straight and shortened purely by your grieving and squelching and deceiving the involuntary ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and by this his doings that is what his wonderful deeds cannot be done in you the marvelous works of the Lord of our God cannot be manifested in you because you do not do good that which has been demanded and you are not walking that which has been called to be upright and in verse number 8 he says even of let my people is risen up as an enemy you pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as man hours from war teaching the standards of deterioration and then he says the women of my people have you cast out from their pleasant houses from their children have you taken away my glory forever that's the corporate witness and that's the corporate assemblies where our Lord of God demands for us the children from where you have taken away my glory and the word which has been called for us the very glory honors and what is happening today because the unveiled children where in today's christendom if they don't train up the child how the way they have to go then definitely the failure of the mother, the failure of the husband first to give them the fear of the Lord as a warning and above all the failure of the Sunday school as well because they have been given this great burden to make them to be the disciples of the word when they are early age itself. So we find the works of the flesh are manifest which are this number one adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lusciousness, asalgia and then he goes to prove idolatry. <laughs> the word idolatry what we find in Revelation 13 8. Those whose names have been written in the book of the Lamb of Life will never bow to idols. But those who have been manifested as idolatry, what for they are manifesting the idols? They want to make it for their own gains made by their own hands. Therefore, Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, his name itself is a revelation to the sinful mankind. He gives us the pleasure to teach to you that there is none on this earth or the heaven or under the earth that could give an image to the Lord. To find that, if ever you can find, Christian should be the expressed image of my Christ spirit. And people should know, if ever they should know, Lord God in you.
because they should find in you that great high quality of virtue that great quality of the fruit of the spirit what we shall read further and finding that fruit of the spirit will manifest you that you have been called to be like the son of god representing him in love and truth therefore what do we find over here the flesh demands idol worship the flesh demands witchcraft the flesh demands hatred the flesh demands variance the flesh demands emulations the flesh demands wrath strife seditions and heresies and this is the work of the flesh and does he stop there no he further continues the flesh goes for envyings murders drunkenness revelings and such like that meant to say what there is no end of that leash what you can do in this flesh therefore he calls in isaiah 48 19 what we were reading a 48 17 sorry first he walks us to march and then he works us to walk because by making us disciples he wants to march in the old testament time because they should fulfill the law but christ of lord our god is the end of the law he kept it forever and he alone fulfilled because none of the israelites could fulfill that because they might have thought they might have kept 99 things for example he says the rich man when he came to say lord what i should do to inherit the kingdom of god he says do this such and such he says from my youth i'm keeping then go back and sell what all you have and come back and follow me did he do that no he says no because his heart was hardened because he wanted to look upon the riches so what we find though he might have kept all the law but broken in one point he's he is found liable for all the law to be broken that is what you have kept 99 things and one thing you have not kept that one thing will disqualify you to say that even the 99 things haven't been kept by you that's what the duty of the law was so you may say envyings i don't keep you may say jealousy i don't have you may say i don't have the things pertaining to mental attitude sins in all of those reasons and you may say i don't live a life of hypocritical mask that's what we read for your conscious sake you judge yourself through the light of the word of the lord of god in the light of bible doctrine you go back and judge are you so if you say so you have sinned yourself that's why we have been kept over here alive to go from milk to bread from bread to meat day by day breath by breath in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit judging ourselves making our life a reality so that through this church age our lord our god should be glorified in us and he says i have glorified in them he doesn't say i will be but he said i have that's the past tense i will be that's the future but he says in the past tense itself he says he has such a confidence on this kind of catechesis of this macarian believers in the lord that he will be glorified in us or through them or in them and that what we are glorifying we are glorifying the flesh because we walk in the flesh and therefore when you walk in the flesh and not in the spirit what do you find though you have been indwelled by the spirit grieving and squelching and lying to them we can come back and make up a notes on this points once again to note how many have been there number one adultery two fornication three uncleanliness four roastlessness and five idolatry six witchcraft seven hatred eight variants nine emulations ten wrath eleven strife twelve seditions thirteen heresies and coming back to verse number twenty one twelfth one envyings fourteenth one murder thirteenth one murderers fourteenth drunkenness fifteenth revilings and he says and such like there is no end and in Ephesians he says it is even shame for us to speak about those things what they do in darkness and how we love a lot of a God pray that we shall glorify or we have been glorifying our Lord and I have been glorified in them then are we really Christians in any one of the things if you have been still stuck up out of this 15 and odd of the 16 one which is etc we can call there is no end of that list if you have been stuck up in any one of those things are you glorifying the lord 
Number one for you, grieving and squelching and deceiving in the indwelling wandering ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is a great lie. That itself is a great sin for you. Qualify yourself first to become a true Christian. Then you can think the name of Christ that has been named for us is really worthy to keep you for you, for you as being called as a Christian in this world. Because the Lord of God has called us that in us he will be glorified. But at what we are able to find, no knowledge, the people will perish. The same thing what he teaches for us in Hosea 4. And what are you doing there, particularly in verse number 4? He teaches very specifically in Hosea chapter 4, verse number 4. He gives us to learn, yet let no man strive, nor reprove one another, for the people are as they that strive with the priest. The word for reap, and what it is, to strive, to contend, to make complaint. Are they complaining about false doctrines? No. They go to complain about the mental attitude since what they have pertaining to the details of life. And why for they go for the priest? Because the lips of the priest should possess knowledge. That's what the word says for us. But are they going to possess the word of the Lord of our God? No. They're not interested at all. And what for they have been looking upon on this earth? the vain glory that's what we shall look in the book of colossians chapter 2 therefore dear brethren the deeds of the flesh how you are it calls for us such and such things examine yourself then apostle paul says for us in first corinthians 3 or first corinthians 4 if you want a perfection you have to leave this earth but we have liberty wherewith we have been set free to look upon the Garden of Eden which has been set before us. The great garden and what our Lord of God describes for the king of Egypt in comparison to the Garden of God of Eden. And it goes there again as we have been reading in Ezekiel 27 and 28. The way how beautiful this earth would have been describing over there. Then the Garden of Eden, what he said. The cedar trees, the fir trees, the chestnut trees. And furthermore, he goes to explain for us. Above all of these things in Philippians 4, verse 8, the true garden of Eden. Then the greater garden of Eden, what our Lord our God planted for Adam and Eve. Then that what the king of Egypt, that's what the Lucifer had. Before even that, he says, you have a new garden of Eden for us, which is Philippians 4, which is far, far, far greater and superior. That's what we can have liberty in our own self when we put to death the flesh deeds. And that's what many people don't understand. What a true privilege you have to enjoy in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Examine yourselves where you are. Hate, red, not in the terms of doctrine, but in the terms of jealousy is what a sin is. We hate them, those who are speaking in tongues, because they do not know that they are blaspheming my Christ. We love to correct them, but they have been stuck in themselves into their emotion or into their human emotion and ecstasy. Therefore, they haven't come out to believe the truth. So what we do, we cut off their fellowship. Though they may be good, though they may be morally right, though they may pay the taxes. When they're not able to honor my Lord by growing up in grace in the edification complex of their soul and things speaking in tongues, they have reached that edification complex and when that emotional gas is over, they are again coming back to the normalcy. How we would definitely obey to see that we could make that friendship with them in continuance. The same thing will be with them.
They don't want the word. When we have read several times in 2 Corinthians 4, 5, the word. When we have read in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, renewed in the standards of the word, anakinezo. Again, the same things what we read in Philippians 1, so that when I've increased in knowledge and in the things pertaining to doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. When the Bible repeatedly affirms, even in 2 Peter 3, 2 and 18, grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, be mindful about the words of the Lord which have been spoken, which have been spoken for us earlier by the prophets and then by the apostles. Be mindful. And yet what we are waiting for, to reject the word, or to humble yourselves and come back and learn the word. And again, go again and again to renew, again and to again come back. To be mindful, Mamnisco. Therefore, he says, in contrary to that, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, because the deeds of the flesh will be burnt off at the judgment seat of Christ. There is no reward for your deeds of your flesh. Though you come and give, having to grieve and squelch, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not having a thorough confession of your sins in your conscience. Because you have to fear the Lord our God. Remember, dear brethren, warning, discipline, number one. If you don't love to come back and humble yourself in the presence of the Lord our God, Lord our God, resist the proud. He is going to take you till to the point of death and is going to release you. The warning, discipline. And if you still say, no, I ignore that warring discipline, then I'm going to die sin unto death. Therefore, he says, when I'm going to use these things by grieving and squelching, wake up to not practice these things because you shall lose the rewards of you in the eternal, in the eternal glory which is to come. On this earth you may move from lower class to higher class, but once you enter into the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, when you die, that's what I say, there is no things pertaining for you to move from lower class to the higher class. The entire eternity which is going to come from eternity past to eternity future, you will be the same. Therefore, he says, do not practice these things. Wake up and invest in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And therefore, he gives a contrary for us. But the conjunction of contrast, the fruit of the Spirit, we find nine things. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The eight or the nine verses, the things what he has explained, were 16 in the first three verses. The flesh, what does it do? And the Spirit, what does it do? And he says, they that are Christ. <laughs> Are we Christ? Are we having the name of Christ? Are we called as Christians? Then better don't call yourself that you are a believer in the Lord. If you are a believer in the Lord, then you have to crucify the flesh with the affections and the lusts of it. Humble yourself so that our Lord our God could give you greater grace to the humble believer. At the same time, when you come to submit yourselves to the Lord, you are there to resist the devil and the devil will flee from you. That's why you will not have any strives among you. You will not have any wrath among you. You will not have any things that could be called as mental attitude, sins of jealousy among you. But rather you would be relaxed like the way what we read, the how a true believer will be, which is generous and brave, the true believer will be temperance, the true believer will be meekness, the true believer will be long-suffering, the true believer will enjoy and show forth the love of the Lord, his joy, his peace. Therefore, the resultant, we should look in Isaiah chapter 48 from verse number 17, because he says, if you are of Christ, the resultant will be pertaining to that one character of the spirit, fruit, which is nothing but dear brethren, Oh, that thou would have hearken, says in verse number 18 of Isaiah 48, to my commandments. Number one, what is to hearken, kasab, to hear attentively and to call for us as a keen regard. So if you have heard my commandments, then had thy peace been as a reward. 
So if you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. It is not just peace. The resultant of the blessing of your salvation is called as peace. And it will be as what he says, like a river, Nahar, which has been going the way our Lord our God says in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. The one in whom the water, the rivers of a living water will flow through. That's the peace. That's the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And then he says for us, Thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. And that's it, Kinu. What is the wave? The wave, the spring, wherewith we have been called as to understand the waves referring to the chastisement of Jehovah. And here in the righteousness of the Lord of our God, when we change from milk to bread, from bread to meat, daily growing up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, he uses for us to understand that he is going to spring up or is going to make over our dead body, which is the flesh, the natural power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to operate in it. That's what the righteousness will work in us. The righteousness as the waves of the sea. The sea refers to, in whichever mannerism you can take, the things pertaining to like a, a roar. The peace will flow like water, that is what the streams or a river. The righteousness as the waves. And the word righteous meant to say, over our dead body. It will be like the great sea. And you know what is the fruit of the Spirit now? If Apostle Paul could describe only one part of Galatians 5, we find Christ our Lord our God saying in John chapter 7 through the Apostle John, but in the book of Isaiah long back he says, the peace will be like a river and the righteousness as the waves of the sea. And furthermore he says, thy seed also had been as the sand. Look upon the prosperity and the offspring of the bowels like the gravel thereof. And his name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. And what a privilege it is to look the gravel or the grain of the sand. And that's what, dear brethren, we have been called figuratively to look how the seed, that is what Zara of you, the seminal varal, will be like the sand, koal, which is again the sand, the gravel, also one part of the sand, and the offspring, tasete, which is nothing but produced on earth, the descendants of you, which has been called metaphorically in the terms pertaining to the flock, where Christ our Lord of our God says, the one who does the will of God the Father, they are my brother, they are my sister, they are my, they are my mother as well like that we find the gravel that is what the descendants it is not only the things pertaining to you of your own lions but the church pastor where he has his church and the flock that's the descendants and how they will be it seems he says in verse number 19 this descendants shall be like the bowels wherewith he says the internal organs are the things pertaining to your great emotions and they shall be thereof forever and his name shouldn't be should have been cut off and not destroyed from before me forever and what a privilege it is for us and that's the resultant of the fruit of the spirit in us and if other continues for us to understand your brethren over here if you are of christ then Crucify the flesh with its affections and lusts. And if you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And here he uses the word peripatao. But here he uses the things pertaining to stoica. In verse number 16, he uses peripatao. And in concluding verse number 25, he uses the word called as to icon. The same thing what he uses in Isaiah 48, 17. When we see the things pertaining to that word, I will lead thee by the way. And leading thee by the way is what we have read, the direct to march. And the way is the course of life, and the way that you should go is again peripatao, to walk. The difference what we find over there, he wanted to make them to first march, lead them, direct, in the way of the course of life. And then he's coming back to teach again 
how you have to walk day by day. But here he begins for us to walk. First thing, peripatao, so that you shall be free from the flesh. You are in a new law, so that when you come to conclude being crucified the Lord, or crucifying the flesh in the Lord, you come back to march in the spirit. And why is that you have to march in the spirit? Because he says... Let us not be desires of men glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Why is that reason? Because we have to learn the apocalyptic epinosis knowledge. The apocalyptic epinosis knowledge of the things pertaining to Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 prayed for us. Dear brethren, do you know what a great privilege we have in this church age? And yet how many days more you want to walk in the flesh, fulfill the deeds of the flesh, and not wake up in the mind ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit that are much needed for us therefore he says in Ephesians 4 17 the greatest verse of all time this I say therefore and testify in the Lord and martyroma in the Lord and he says that you henceforth walk not as the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind that's the great privilege what we have not to walk in the vanity of their mind what is the vanity of their mind the puffing up of the flesh but what is our duty? Philippians 1 teaches to us what is our duty. He says for us in this great verse to realize and to understand that we, our Lord, our God being the witness for us, he teaches very specifically that this I pray that your love may abound more and more in the epinosis knowledge and in all judgment, sensibility, aesthesis so that what you may be testing dokimazo the things to be of more value and more excellent so that you are elecrinias that is what you are sincere and having unstumbling in part of your duty towards the lord of a god and how you are elecrinias he says till to the day of judgment and therefore, dear brethren, you should be helicrinia, shining judge. That is what without spot or blame to such a degree as to bear examination in the full splendor of the sun. That is what in the full splendor of the word of the Lord of a God. That is what Eli Krenias is all about. In the translation we find, be sincere, but no, it is having a great meaning than that. Therefore, dear brethren, applying to our consciousness, not stumbling blocks, or to be of more value and more excellent against anything for which our heart condemns us. Therefore, we should be not stumbling or falling in the path of being fellowship of Lord God the Father and walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and then to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16 over 25. Therefore, we should be free. And then what does he say? Having been filled, plero again, with fruits of righteousness through Jesus Christ into the esteemed glory and to the praise of the Lord our God. Dear brethren, the state commanded for us by Lord God the Father in Christ alone we have to show forth not in the outward appearance but our inward appearance to reflect the splendor of the Lord and that is what reflecting the glory of the Lord fulfilling John chapter 17 verse 10 and at the same time we find your brother in Colossians chapter 2 why and how you are not able to fulfill these things it is purely because you are not being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ therefore he says let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of a new moon or of a sabbath which are short of the things to come but the body is of Christ and therefore further he gives a second warning let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshipping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshy mind and why he does that because he has not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourished minister that is what the right duty of the pastor teacher and knit together increaseth with the increase of God or being united in growing in the growth of the Lord of a God which is the resultant of the work of the pastor teacher therefore he says if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are you subject to such ordinances which are not in accord with the word of the Lord of a God which the precepts have been taught by mouth by the precepts of men and not by the 
precepts of the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore, he says, touch not, taste not, handle not, which all things are to perish with the using after the commandments and the rudiments or the doctrines of men, and which things have only what? Indeed, a shew of wisdom in all worship, or in will worship, and humility, and neglecting what? The body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. And therefore, dear brethren, the churches are been ending up in those standards. And if you don't love to come back and renovate your standards according to the word of the Lord of our God, let Lord of our God help you at the judgment seat of Christ. But we have nothing over here on this earth to be more profitable for us than to preach the word of the Lord of our God in accuracy. Because if you don't have the sure and right foundation, then definitely you will turn into confusion. And therefore, dear brethren, we need to look that rock is our Christ, which symbolizes that truth is found only in the mind of Christ. Our own weaknesses and dependencies require a foundation of absolute perfection. And why can this possibly be found except in the one who is himself the true living Lord of a God, the only monon alathenian tian. And that only monon alathenian tian alone reigns forever and forever. So, dear brethren, think over these issues. We have many things to come and communicate in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and yet there is a time for us to understand these things more accurately than anything else on this earth. Therefore, dear brethren, we have to look the things pertaining to Bible doctrine as number one priority. And if you don't come back and give number one priority for the word of the Lord of our God, as he has designed the peace to flow like rivers, as he has designed that we shall be having the righteousness working in us, the great glory of the Lord of our God, and yet you have to, haven't hearkened to his word, then you're going to end up like this Gentile nations. But we have been kept over here to be the polytema privileges of the heavenly one. And we have been kept over here, the inner mind to match the outward appearance when he comes in glory, because our life has been hid in Christ. So what you sow, that you will reap. If you sow to the wind, you will reap war wind. If you neglect Bible doctrine, then definitely your life is nothing but not able to have a right foundation or a sure foundation, but your life itself has been ruined. And we have only one true Lord of our God, which is Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being manifested for us in the form of flesh, demanding that we have been made in the image of God to walk like Him because we have the sperm of Christ. We know very well, dear brethren, the people, how they get motivated whenever they look movies. For example, the seventh sense, a movie being made in India, where he says his grandfather was a origin of that Buddha or the things pertaining to some martial arts. And now he has the genes of that grandfather and even he could also take the same terms. And that's what a movie it is all about. But the things what we learned, dear brother, and more specifically, if that is a movie and the people believe it's such and such, when they can have the energy of the genes of their fathers being passed on to them, how much more it should be for us today? Because the word says we have the sperm of Christ. And if we are of Christ, why can't we crucify the lusts and affections of this flesh and walk in the spirit of the Lord of our God in love, joy, and peace. Not just to walk, but march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, says the scripture. There is nothing that Satan can even touch you on this earth because it can never influence you. It can influence you only by false teachings, but right teachings it cannot. Therefore, you have been given, greater is the one that is in you than the one who is in this world. You have been told to glorify the Lord of our God in your flesh, First Corinthians 6, 19, because you have been bought with a great price. There is nothing, dear brother, where it you can stop yourself with your own negative volition not to come to Bible doctrine. And there is nothing of a force on this earth that could stop you to come and learn Bible doctrine. It is your own negative volition. Therefore, the outward man perishes, though inward man has to be renewed day by day. And that's why we come to teach to you day by day to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that you shall not fulfill the lusts of your flesh and there they have been said to march to keep the law and then they have been called to walk in the law but now we have been called first to walk in the spirit that is peripateo and then we have been called to march in the spirit to look and to learn the greater things of epinosis of greater apocalypti which have been yet there for us to reveal the mystery doctrine of the church which Christ our Lord our God himself exemplifies in John 16 25 to teach no longer talking in parables or proverbs you shall talk boldly the mystery doctrine of Christ and the same thing what we find in 2 Timothy 4 2, preach the word, kerusothon lagan, in season and out of season. What is that word? The mystery doctrine of the church age, Colossians 4 2 through 4 through 6. And how many days more you want to still lie in your slumberness of uncleanliness, you think over it. 
But dear brethren, we do sin either by thought, word or deed as well. But it is the grace of the Lord our God in providing for us that great grace for the humble believer, my son Karen, so that Lord our God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble believer. So think about this issue, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this great festival season, which it's been called as Hanukkah. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In our will to link to Lord God the Father that you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is the moment itself you shall find the great truth of the Lord. That's the great life of eternal one. But you have been kept over here alive on this earth till the day of your death being designed by the Lord or rapture because to form in you the character of Christ, because to get in you the morphate of the Lord of a God so that you could be glorifying the Lord of a God in your soul, in your spirit, through your flesh. And furthermore, the great reason why I've been kept alive to do the deeds of the Lord of a God working in us faithfully. Faithfully. And that is what we have to look for every time which our Lord of our God sends for us. The grace, the breath we have every day to renew according to the standards of his thinking and to become like Christ. And whereas for the believer, the greatest mandate is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the greatest mandate is to carry Sothan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season because of the Amar my witnesses where we have been called. The number one Amar my witnesses in Wellington Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Amar my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be witnesses but what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of the lord of our god no matter however the chips may fall so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to honor his word above his name by the holy manner walk of life that we need to walk not just to peripatio in the spirit but to march in the spirit in the old testament it was from march to walk but now it is in the new testament from walk to march for the epinosis knowledge of the great apocalyptic mystery doctrine of the church age to be taught in all pulpits so which way you go dear brother and you decide but we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same grace of the lord of our god to honor his word above his name infinitely holy divine father what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship with through the word father we pray that lord god the whole spirit challenges by this message and make it a source of blessing to them who have truly understood the concept of which you have called for us from the old testament wherewith they have been making them to march and then to walk but now you have made us to walk in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit first as galatians 5 16 to cleanse out all the things of the flesh and later as we come being in christ crucifying our own lustful pa lustful patterns and affections of the flesh and making us to walk in the spirit not only just to walk if ever we live we have called to say the Zao life, the true life, then we shall march for the true mystery doctrine of the church age. Father, help us to do that will faithfully, and nothing else on this earth is more important for us than to honor the word above your name. And we are thankful for the grace of Lord, so that we have said for us in Isaiah 48 17, the peace will flow like a reverse. What a great privilege it is for us in comparison to John 7 37 through 39, wherewith you are purchased of our flesh with a great price, so that we can have that peace of true life being transformed from human viewpoint to look upon the heavenly citizen divine viewpoint and to be free from the lustful patterns of the flesh. So that, Father, help us help us as we grow up daily, and those who are weak, O oh Lord, help them also to come back to thy word, because nothing on this earth is greater for them as well to honor thee above thy name, for the name they have been named as Christian. Help us to do thy will, O oh Lord, and strengthen us more and more for thy glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these terms. Amen.